Hi, I'm Purple Streak, and today you get to watch me suffer. I think this channel may be the death of me soon with some of the I review, but there's one game I promised someone I'd review, so I can't leave this world without doing it. So here goes. This is the SpongeBob game that time should forget. This game was developed in 2004 by Or Games. Or Games? More like awful games. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Also, this sexy granny dipped her hand into making this game at some point. Sorry to get a bit off topic, but my what kind of weirdos have a granny in a sexy pose giving me bedroom eyes as their logo? For a kids game. This is how fetishes start, people. Get this off my SpongeBob game, thanks. So the reason I was asked to review this was because a friend of mine bought this game as a naive child thinking it was the same game I had on the GameCube. It has the same name, so it's reasonable to assume it would be the same game, but nope. The SpongeBob game on consoles was created by the incredible team at Heavy Iron Studios, the studio behind Battle for Bikini Bottom, the holy grail of SpongeBob games. The PC version, though, is a completely different game. The console version is a fun platformer with interesting mechanics and follows the plot of the film. Is the PC version? Well, let's find out together. The answer is no! This game is terrible compared to the console version. Just ask the All That Remains frontman Phil LeBon. I've never played this game before or even know what game you're talking about, but I hate it. I mean, if that doesn't convince you, nothing will. Right now, you're probably asking yourself why I wanted a metal vocalist to cameo for this SpongeBob video. Anyway, moving on. So here's two things that this game does well. The graphics, kinda, and the humour. Most of the character models aren't bad and suffice for the type of game it is. And some of the jokes in the game seem good enough to appear in an actual episode, or a newer episode at least. Like, check this scene out. I was wondering if I could borrow some of your toothpaste. I'm out and I want to look my best for the grand opening today. I'd love to help you out, SpongeBob. Only I'm not going to. Oh! You're leaving! My horoscope was right! Today is a day of great joy! It's not the funniest thing in the world, but I could imagine that in an episode. That's Squidward's trademark sarcasm right there. Also, why is he showering with clothes on? Yes, Squidward, it saves time having to wash your clothes separately, but have some self-respect, man. So the game starts off with SpongeBob doing a few bits and pieces, and then it cuts to Plankton and Karen essentially recreating the scene from the movie, but on a shoestring budget. Essentially the same lines, but delivered with that half the pay for twice the work feel to the voices. Yes, every last one from A to Y. There is nothing left. Um, what about Z? Z? Z, the letter after Y. Groups? Oh boy. Eroops? Ah oh, yes, I remember that scene. Z? Z, the letter after Y. Groups? You then get to play a riveting minigame where you fly Plankton from right to left. It's... well... Yeah. Now this is where the game starts to fall apart. So I'm trying to sneak into King Neptune's castle to steal his crown. Uh, just saying that to catch up all the scrubs watching that don't know the SpongeBob movie plot. And so I naturally try and find a way to sneak in. I check the barn holding the dead-eyed cowgirl, get a horseshoe, then try and distract the guards with it because it's the only item I have. Then I click the door and, oh, I guess I can just go in. I mean, what? The guards are right there, damn it. The door didn't open by itself. Check, you lazy holes. And no, I'm not asking too much from a SpongeBob game aimed at children. Give me a little challenge for God's sake. No, no, don't, don't dislike the video. I'm sorry, no more puns. Here's another example of this game just sucking the joy out of the world around it. You remember this scene, right? <laughs> Well, here's this game's interpretation of it. Way to get it back! The guy who took it probably has the keys near him. Let's just march in there and take them. Patrick, I think we're gonna have to be a little more sneaky than that. Maybe if we distract him... Yeah, distract him. Then we can take the keys while he isn't looking. Sounds like a great idea. Okay, let's get to it, buddy. Please, you have the license. You have the voice actors. 
For the love of Neptune, you must have at least seen the movie, so I changed the script to remove the joke. Hey, who blew these bubbles? Wait, Patrick, let's grab the keys while he isn't looking! Good idea! Wow, what a faithful recreation of that scene from the movie. I could barely tell the difference. Another thing I will give credit to this game for is the fact that some of the levels revolve around things that happen off camera in the movie. Such as this bit where you take control of Mindy, who has to make her way to Spongebob to give them the magic moustaches. It's a good way of creating levels while still keeping to the movie's plot and- Ooh, glue! <sighs> anyway, where was I? You don't have a rash, I promise you. Oh boy, that character animation is casting a check that a voice actor cannot afford. It's like the movements don't line up with the voice. Most of the game comes across like this, so I'll try my best not to harp on about it. But it's hard, you know? Guess I'll stop making fun of animations and voice acting and move on to tearing the plot a new one. So, while I praise the fact that some of the levels fill in the parts of the film we don't see, some of the levels make no sense being there. There's a level where they go to a spooky hotel, they go to a cave, then for no reason at all they go into a hospital, and then there's this great section where you walk through a riveting maze. Oh wait, I could have said it was amazing. Oh, that would have been so good. Oh damn it, I'll let it in later. Hey guys, I'm going to be real with you here. I can't take much more of this. I thought I could handle this, but I can't. Would you mind if I skip to the end? I mean, I like Spongebob as much as the next guy. In fact, more than the next guy. The next guy only watched it as a kid and has fond memories of it. The freak. I'm a big fan of Spongebob, but even I have my limits. So, just this once. Let it slide. For me. Okay, thanks. Here's the ending. The ending? Oh boy. It's a freaking Guitar Hero ending. And not a good one. Listen to that sick song. Please hit me as hard as you can. Psst. Squidward, I'm looking guitar strings. Don't hold back. Just like I remember. The Spongebob movie on console managed to license the song for their final boss battle. Why couldn't the PC version? Why do I have to sit for this dreary, uninspired, generic- And then when you're done, it cuts to that dumb storytelling book again. And boom, you're done. Whoa. Whoa, 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 wait. Does anyone else hear that? I'm not editing that in, it's genuinely the Goofy Goober Rock song. I was understanding of the awful music before, because I assumed they didn't have the license for it. But here it is! They have the license for the song, why didn't they use it in the Guitar Hero segment? This game is just screwing with me at this point, I just don't understand the logic. It's like if a series used generic Mission Impossible-esque music for a spy scene, and then just had the Mission Impossible soundtrack in the credits. It makes no sense! It makes no sense at all, damn it! Oh my god, I wrote this bit of the script too soon! The song is literally in the credits! I'm done. Goodbye, world! I'm done. This is the last Purple Streak episode ever. Goodbye. Hey guys, uh, Javen told me this might happen, so funeral will be Monday. Uh, he wanted me to tell you to leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, and if you could do that in his memory, that would be fantastic. Thanks for watching.